Let the peace of Christ rejoice in your hearts, and be ye thankful. Of the several great lessons contained in today's epistle, the one most insisted on and brought out is that of thankfulness and joyfulness in the service of God. In the labors of St. Paul, and his labors were more abundant than all the apostles, in his frequent tribulations and crosses, he never ceased giving thanks in all things, nor did he ever tire of inculcating the same duty on the first Christians. If, then, my brethren, thankfulness and joyfulness are such a great part of religion, it would be well this morning to see that if it be characteristic of our service, we have a multitude of reasons for being thankful to God. If we but thought of them, the gifts of nature, life, health, strength, the pleasures and gratifications of the mind, learning, objects of interest, of study and beauty, both in nature and art, the pleasures of home, the joys of friendship. These are real and great benefits. They are causes of joy and motives of thankfulness. Our good God intended us to find enjoyment in the moderate use of them, not, indeed, as ends in themselves, but as means to our one end. And so he has spread the charm of beauty over this place of our sojourn and made it pleasant and interesting, lest we lose heart and become sad and languish on our journey to heaven. But to speak of higher gifts and benefits, what motives of joy and thankfulness ought we not to find in the knowledge of God, His truth, mercy, and goodness as made known to us in the Scripture and His divine Son, our Savior and friend, the God-man, in the gift of faith, the spiritual riches of the Church and the sacraments, His mercies to us personally, blessing on our labors, the removal of dangers from our path, his gracious forgiveness of our sins, time and again. Then, too, what we expect and through his mercy count on for the future, the joys of heaven, those delights which pass our understanding. The life of heaven will be pure joy and its one occupation thankfulness. Surely, then, this life should be a figure and a foretaste of it. And so St. Paul thought, for he bids us be thankful, rejoice, and rejoice always, singing in grace in our hearts, and in every word and work giving thanks to God. It is plain that, since God has done his part in bestowing the benefits in such abundant measure, we should do ours in returning thanks, for gratitude is the correlative of benefit. It is equally plain that the true religion is joyful. Now, is such our religion? Is this the way we act? Is it the way we consider God's service? We see, I think, more anxious and sad faces than thankful and glad ones, and I fear that the joyfulness of the latter does not come generally from the reasons I have given. It comes too often from the worldly causes, from success and temporal things, from hopes and prospects which relate to indifferent things, if they are not dangerous and positively bad. Whereas the common idea of religion is that it is an unpleasant, sad, uphill sort of thing, which imposes restraints upon us, and, far from being a cause of thankfulness and joy, is a great interference with the pleasure of life. Pious people, too, are regarded as dull, simple, spiritless creatures, quite the opposite of joyful. This is all wrong, all false. And if it be our religion, then we have not the true religion, at least practically. For as God's benefits are real and great, so our thanks and joy should be in them and correspond to them. Religion being our highest duty, should be and can be our highest pleasure. God says it is, and he is truth. Those who have tried say the same. What shall I render to God for all he hath rendered to me? Better one day in the courts than a thousand years in the tents of sinners. Taste and see how sweet the Lord is. Our consciences and experience bear out the same truth. 
For surely evil cannot be compared to good in fullness, in intensity, and above all, it will not wear, it will not last, and it leaves us dissatisfied, fearful, sad. The pleasure and joy of a good life to a good man even here are far greater than the pleasure of sin to a sinner. Let us then make up our minds once for all that not only is religion the most necessary, but the wisest and happiest thing for us. Let us serve God with thankfulness, both for what he has done and will do for us if we are faithful. If he has done so much in this state of probation, exile, and punishment, what will he not do when the time of reward and enjoyment arises? Surely, considering what we are and what we have done, the pains and crosses bear no proportion to the benefits, and we have cause even in present labor to be thankful and in every word work to give him praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.